so much for yeah. joining us. Facebook, thank you for joining us. Please like and share to our broadcast today. We have a phenomenal word coming to you at 8.15 yeah. from our very own Apostle Gregory McCurry. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And then at 10.45, if you want to come back at 10.45, Pastor T, today is Deliverance yeah. Sunday. Also, those of you on Facebook, that today is our pastoral giving day. So we want you to sow into Pastor T today. You should see her um, cash app streaming all through our broadcast today. So please, please, please give unto our pastor, Teresa McCurry, today. We want to bless her. Yeah. So please give unto her today. But again, welcome. Sit back. Now, you know my baby, sit back. You know, just be ready to jump on your feet because we're going to have a hallelujah good time today. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. So, you know, we like to start off with our vision statement. Yeah. All right. So, in, in case you don't know it quite yet, I know you all are getting there, right? Yeah. We have tools to help you. Yeah. So, if you're visiting, there's a tripod behind your seat and it's in the middle of the tripod. It's going to be on every monitor in the sanctuary. And Facebook, we didn't forget about you. It's going to pop up on your screen. So we want you to say it with us as we say our vision on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. We are New Beginning Ministries. Our vision is based upon the scriptorial theme taken from 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, which according to the Amplified Version states that, Therefore, if any person being grafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. Our vision is translated here upon the earth through a dynamic, multicultural, non-denominational ministry emphasizing faith, family, and fellowship. We are a word reading, a word believing, and a word doing kind of people all for God's glory. We will walk in the fruit of the Spirit, operate in the gifts of the Spirit, and daily put on the whole armor of God, believing in the fivefold ministry offices, and taking part in the evidence of his glory with signs, wonders, and miracles following. We long to see lives transformed by introducing a real God to real people with real issues. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So I'm going to be reading Proverbs 20 and 4. A farmer too lazy to plant in the spring has nothing to harvest in the fall. Let me just tell this quick story real quick. So I was at work and the elevator went down. I had to take the stairs. And I'm taking these stairs. I'm like, I don't want to do this. Complaining the whole time. And I got to the top and it hit me. God said, This is how y'all are. Y'all want to get to the top. Don't want to put in no work. Okay, you gotta stop having such a lazy approach when it comes to ministry. You want to sometimes do it. You want to sometimes get a blessing. Oh, you in there. Laziness is foolishness incarnated. It is the ultimate rejection of God's wisdom for the world. God doesn't give increase to the lazy. You gotta put in some work. So God said, let's have a cavalier spirit and let's be all in. Amen. Oh my God. So Father, since we came in here this morning, we came in here with great expectation. God, we're looking for you. We're listening for you. We're excited about this day. So God, we say welcome into this house. Let your glory be revealed, God. We're looking for signs, wonders, and miracles this morning. God, we say thy kingdom come and your will be done, and we'll give you the glory in advance. We thank you for the word of God that's going forth, that's coming out of the belly of our leaders, and we say, Lord, don't let us leave out of here the way we came in. God, we thank you in advance, and we say yes to your will. In 
Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.
confident in this. Because the King of glory saves me daily. Keeps me, heals me, delivers me.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give them back to me.
the ninth chapter, <laughs> 1 through 11. We do got something we have to share with you today that the Lord will start that timer, please. Um, that anytime I just get up, start the timer, right? Or, or morning manna, not on the other side. <laughs> yeah, be very clear. I mean, I lost a half hour just by music, amen. So uh, we, we have something we want to share with you guys that I believe, um, and son, prophetically, you've already spoken a lot of what God was saying, um, and I know that we're here where God wants us to be at this morning, and I just believe beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you have your ears wide open, you're going to see some things today that you ain't never saw before, and you're going to be ready to receive. I always tell you I wear t-shirts for a reason. Amen. And really the reason is most time if you watch what I do, it's in the back of it, then I come so you can see the front of it because most people want what's in the back, but they don't know what it takes to get it. Oh I can teach right here, right? Y'all want it now. So you look at it and say, I'm a believer, I'm a doer, and I'm a receiver, and you want that, but are you a earth? Oh. Are you willing to you want the you want to be up here, but will you do what it takes to get? It? Okay, so let's go into the scripture because I feel like I'm already preaching. Uh, St. John 9, 1 through 11. And if everyone could, that could, um, play, please stand while we read the word of the Lord. Um, and we're going to read it with power and authority um, at the count of three. I'm going to do like you, three. See, I caught y'all off guard. See, 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 y'all ain't following instructions, amen? See, y'all will see, this is what I want to tell y'all. Get out the normal. Out the normal. You were waiting for me to count, but I told you on the count of three, I didn't tell you I was going to count three. Okay, you can't do this. This has got to come from me. Hey, Daddy can say this. Amen. Uh, one, two, four. And See, I, I'm helping y'all today. Let's try it again. Three. And he saw a man which was blind from birth. And his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Okay, check this out. Let's pick it up a little bit because I only got a half hour, amen. Let's pick it up just a little bit, please. Y'all dragging it out for me, amen. I, I'm like here, and y'all like back here. So can y'all pick it up with me a little bit? Okay, one, two, three. Jesus answered, neither has this man sin, nor his parents, but that the works of God shall be made. <laughs> that's that nanny boy up there. That's that, that's that nanny boy up there. He's still upset because I beat him on the track. That's that penny, sir. He's still mad. Okay, we're going to go back. Don't worry, visitor. We really get to the word of the Lord. Amen. Just got to put some things in order. Have to get some jealous spirits and all that out of the way. You know, you ready now? You went that fast in the go kart, so don't be fast in my word now. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. See? So he said, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents. But that the works of God should be manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day that night cometh when no man can work. And as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Salaam, which is thy interpretation since. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, he is like him, but he said, I am he. Therefore said unto him, how were thy eyes open? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto 
unto me, go to the pool of Salam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. John 2 and 5, John 2 and 5, John 2 and 5. Hallelujah. John 2 and 5. Hallelujah. Well, I know it by heart. Amen. It was right up there. Um, it says, um, and if you, no, no. Whatever he tell you to do, whatso, whatsoever he say unto you, do it. Amen. If we could go back, y'all could be seated. If we could go back, you don't have to go back, but go and park with me. And St. John the ninth, I'm going to go back and revisit um, verse 11, which is a very powerful voice. And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay, anointed my eyes, and said unto me, go to the pool of Salam and wash. And I washed, and I received my sight. Um, today I want to share with you again... Um, from the title, um, Minister Rashawn, and this will help you when you get up. Um, there is a miracle in your movement. Amen. Uh, I just wanted to share with you real quickly. Yeah. Chelsea, I need you to move over so I can see your face because that pole is blocking me. Thank you so much. Amen. Because you be one to react. Amen. And I love that. But the title of my message is, There is a miracle in your movement. Yes. And my subtopic today it's a setup. Yes. It's a setup. It's a miracle in your movement. And just to let you know up front, when he asks you to move, he's setting you up to bless you. Amen. So, 2021, um, and I'm going to reiterate this probably the rest of this year because I want it to be settled in you. Um, this year has been set up, Prophetess Terry, for us to experience the totality of God. Yeah. He wants you to experience everything. Let me read it like he said. He said, I want you to um, understand all that God is, all that he has, and all that he can do for you. Yeah. So, so this year, despite of some of the things you have gone through, it has been set up really, and I need to get you out of every time you go through something, you are blaming the enemy. Because if you read your Bible, you will find out later on in Scripture, they had killed Jesus, and the enemy, they thought the enemy was a part of it. But there is a Scripture that said this, if the enemy knew that the cross was going to do that for us, he would have never done it. So what happens is, a lot of times, son, God is placing us in a position, not the enemy, because when God places you in a position, he's placing you in this position so you can get to know him in a whole other place. Because until you go through whatever you go through, you'll never know him like that. Until you have lost your job that you said the enemy took away from you, but you don't know God was just setting you up to prove to you who he was and that your job had become your God. And he said, I need to make a shifting in you. And so when you lost your job, you blamed the enemy. You went home, you cried, you weep, you tripped, you did all kinds of stuff. And God said, you must not know who I am. Yeah. Because if you knew who I was, you know the same God that got you the job was supplied for you greater than the job can. So why are you complaining when I just set you up to bless you like you never would? Because you wouldn't quit the job that I told you to quit. So I had to let you get fired so you could finally get the setup that I got for you. Because if they never get fired, you ain't gonna never go nowhere. Because every time I'm about to take you out of it, I'm gonna get they gonna give you another raise, but I'm trying to give you a promotion. He wants you to know who he is. Yes. He wants you to know what he can do. Uh, and he wants you to know I am God and I'm God all by myself. Yeah. 
Even in Deuteronomy, I think it is the eighth chapter, he uh -huh. begins to talk to the children of Israel. He said, I'll put you in the wilderness. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, the devil did not put you in the wilderness. And when the, Jesus went in the wilderness, most of the time people talk about the attack of the enemy on Jesus. But son, usually they don't talk about how God brought him out. See, I will not talk about the attack of the enemy because the temptation for Jesus was not to tempt him with the enemy. It was to show you that God was still God. And anything God puts you in, God said, I'll bring you out of it. And in case you didn't know, he said, no weapon for me against you won't prosper. Now listen, he didn't say it wasn't going to come, but he wanted to let you know I'm the God of the weapon and I'm the God that will bring you out of it. And I am the God and if you don't know it when you come out of this, all you gonna be able to say, Lord, I thank you. You can shut up. You can shut up. You can shut up. You can shut up. It's been a shut up. It's been a It's been a shut up, y'all. And he said to tell you, um, he said, this year has been set up for you. I told y'all that in the very beginning. It's been set up. For you. Yes. And he said, tell you this, so I can get you to what I have already set up for you. Already. It's already set up, so I already got it set up. How do I know that? He said, because all our scriptures have a key in there that's in everything we talked about this year. Yes. It's all about you this year. Yes. For a matter of fact, this is what he told me this morning that blew my mind. He said, this one is between you and me. He said, this ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. This is, I am sitting next to you and asking you, what can I do for you? And when you answer me, I'm going to tell you what you can do for me. But when I answer you back, I'm going to show you what heaven already got prepared for you. Let me tell you what your answer is. Your answer is obedience. about you, then they are about him. He said, Isaiah 1 and 19, if you are willing and obedient, then I will give you the good of the land. Wait a minute. You first, me next. You first, me next. Not me first, then you. No, I want you to do whatever I tell you to do because in the midst of you doing it, you're going to find out who I really am. So let me keep on going. This year was set up for you and God. Your obedience is about to produce some God type of results. And God type of results are never normal. Okay, let me give y'all this. I'm going to get ahead of my notes right now. He said, let me give y'all this. He said, God results, okay, wait a minute. God results. And God's all, um, uh, results are always exceeding. Yeah. 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 Because I couldn't get ahead of myself, but I got to walk this out. I forgot I'm at the morning manor. I would have I been going to my preach by now, but I'm in morning manor today, Bob, so I'm going to keep this right where it is. He said, in God's results, remember this. We serve the God of the exceeding. Whenever God tells you to do something, I do the normal or what's in my capacity to do. But when he turns around, he does what's outside of my capacity to do. Because when it's over with, you know it had to be him that did this. And all you can tell people is what you did, but you're not going to be able to explain how God did it. Because God said, when I come in, I always exceed. Anybody know my God that is exceeding God? A God that will go way beyond everything you ever asked, prayed, or thought? Say, exceed me, Lord. Because the cheating people don't sit on their feet, they posture themselves for what heaven is about to give them. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Because I'm not normal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the God of a 
For a matter of fact, Ephesians 3 and 20, the Amplified Version says this. Now unto him. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Talking about God. He said, now unto him. By a consequence of the action of his power. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's in you. Yeah. Can I help y'all with something? Let me park here for a minute. Quit asking for a million dollars and ask for a million dollar ideal. Yeah. Y'all didn't test that. No one give me a million dollars. No. But if you give me a million dollars, somebody can take my million dollars. Yeah. But if you put a million dollars Oh, God. Yeah. 
like this. It ain't coming to coffee. Part of it. <laughs> but it's because I got to know him. Mm. In every situation I got in, I got to know him, Rashad. Right. When I lost my job, I got to know him yeah. as a provider. I know it's a priest. When I was in court, I got to know him yeah. as a lawyer. Yeah. When I got sick one time and they could not figure it out, I got to know him as a healer. It was nothing but a setup. Because now if I get a symptom, I'm already healed. Because I know him as a healer. I don't care where my bank account is at. I know him as Jehovah Jireh. It don't matter what I go through now. My setup would prepare me for right He says this, is able, he's able within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly. Super abundantly. Uh, far over and above all that you even dare. This is what he be saying. Jerry, I dare you to ask me. Now, see, y'all, y'all, who can I talk to? He said, listen. I, 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 God, be blessed. Don't ask me. No. You too scared to ask me? You know why you scared to ask me? Because you don't know me. So here he said, I, wait a minute, I dare to ask, or, wait a minute, I'll take your fault. If you're scared to say it, I'll take what you think. See, I'm, oh, okay, okay. Now, this is the quiet atheist He said, listen, I'm God. I already know what you think. You can't even hide your thought from me. I dare you to go in and think it out. And then I'll mess around and come in and I'll put my exceeding. Oh, Wait a minute, are y'all ready? Wait a minute, are y'all ready? Not only am I going super abundantly, I'm not going to even go far above it, but I'm about to go infinitely beyond. In other words, God say, I'm about to beat me. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all didn't catch that. Since I'm God of eternity, I gotta go in for the deep. Are y'all, are y'all get off? Somebody say surprise me, Lord. Wait a minute. I'm going down somebody. He said, okay, you can't say it. You can't fit it. What about do you desire it?
You better come on in. He said, okay, let me finish. He said, your infinitely beyond your highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and your dreams. Yeah. Did that cover everything? Yeah. Well, right then, somebody should have been shocked. Because yeah. God is, okay, y'all. I don't know, wait a minute, maybe I can text, maybe, who, who's, okay, wait a minute, let me tell you, you thank you, Chelsea, somebody should have been shouting and up on their feet, because God just said, I'm about to go exceedingly beyond where you at right now, and because I'm God, I am about to step into your life, and every place you have planted, even a thought, a desire, a prayer, whatever, I'm about to exceed it. Because all I want, I just, I just dare you to do what I told you to do. Somebody stop going. Well, oh, matter of fact, this is what the Lord told me this week. I'm going to drop this on y'all. Let's see how this makes y'all react. He said, I'm too God to be normal. That's what he told me. He said, tell I am, I am, I am, I tell them, I'm too God to produce normal. I'm too God to produce. <laughs> and I am the God of the supernatural. Or, you got to know this, I am the God of the miraculous. That's who he is. He's too God to be normal. He, he can't be, even if he tried to be normal. Let me tell you how I know that. He came down as Jesus. But he couldn't be normal. He, he was still working miracles everywhere he went. They thought he was just Mary's son. But he was not because he could not be normal even in humanistic form. And if you got God in you, you should not be normal in humanistic form because now you have him working within you and you need to start working like the one that's working in you. And you don't know what the one that's working in you, even when you sleep, he's still working in you. That's why you have dreams and visions and you wake up in the morning and you got a right because he's still been working. Because the God I serve, he don't sleep nor does he suffer, but he keeps on working with Okay. Yeah. Somebody say, surprise me! So, that's why he's been daring people this year. I dare you. I dare you to start a whole business with one person. I dare you. Yes, I do. Come on, I dare you. Go on and try me. And you start with one person with five rooms. Then I dare you go by a van with one person. And dare you. And see if I won't do. And when everybody else got ten and had to file bankruptcy, you got one and still. See, I told the I, I dare you to pack a bag. I didn't ask you about your credit. I didn't ask you about nothing else. I just said, pack a bag. I dare you. Because if you pack a bag, I'll do the exceeding. See, you just got to do your dare part. And then he said, then you force me to be. Let me help y'all. When you tired, you force God to step down out of heaven and fight every rebuke and spirit that betray. I dare you. For back I said, prove me. Dare you. See if I won't do it. And I guarantee you, it won't come back void. Okay. Facebook, I dare you. He said, because if I can dare you or you dare me, I will always do it. See. And abundantly. You 
started off with one client. Now no, you just don't have a daycare. Now you have a transportation company. And God said, Amen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. see y'all gonna even take an A. Yeah. Which means I ain't even told you what else I'm gonna do. Because I just wanted to know if you would do that and get some result. And every time you got a result, it'll make you a error to make you start being a believer. That's why I've been setting this up. Because I had to get you from obedience to believing so you can receive. Yeah. 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 So I am right. That's the message right there. I need to get a t-shirt. Hey. Because when God is doing things, he will not reveal oh everything he's doing. Oh he just want to know if you do it. Because when you do it, you put a demand on heaven. You have no idea what God got on his mind about you. Let me go and step ahead of myself. That's why you need to quit going to prophetic conferences. Until you start getting some results off of what you already got. The trick of the enemy is to fill you up with a lot of hope, but never give you any results. So you're always looking for a prophetic word. But how many more words do I need? I don't need another word. I need some delivery of the word that's in me. What you gonna do? Keep prophesying. I'm already convinced. Okay. See, in here, people are literally getting what they're saying. They have obeyed. They have done what God said. And guess what? They are getting done. And let me tell you how crazy they is. If you ask them, how did it happen? They don't tell you. I don't even know. I can't even tell you how I got. I went from living here and moved here and I didn't even have no job. All I know is I move. There is a miracle in your next move. I got an announcement to me. The next move that you must, God said, I'm about to rend heaven on earth. See, but y'all don't know that was a place for your praise today. In other words, I'm praising you for my surprise that I ain't even got yet. I'm going to clap already and tell you, Lord, I thank you. I don't know what you're going to do because you just got all by yourself. He said, I ain't even revealed it to a prophet yet because it's up in heaven. And if it get through it, then that means you don't know it. And I just want to know. So this is what he told me. He said, quit running after prophetic words. Start expecting the surprises. Gotta change everything. I'm not ready at all. I ain't got to run in order. Surprise me. Let me come back down. God said, tell you, I'm too God to produce more. He said, I'm the God of the supernatural. And I'm also the God of miracles. Or I am the God of the miraculous. That just who I am, that's just who I am. And that is just what I do. And if you come to me any less than that, you really don't know me yet. So I'm going to have to set you up again. And it ain't going to be the enemy. It's going to be me. So you'll know who I am. 
Because again, this year is set up for you to learn him in the totality. For a matter of fact, Job 5, 8, 9 said this in the King James. He said this, I would, I would seek unto God and I would commit my ways which doeth great things. He said, listen, first of all, let me give you what I got. He said, because he doeth. What do that mean? He can he continually yes. does, listen, great things. Great. He don't do with great thing. Uh -huh. right. See, you get the great thing, right. and then you think you there. Right. The great thing was just the appetizer right. Right. to make you want to sit at the table right. and wait for the main meal. And then you'll be like us, and we got the main meal, and the guy came out and said, listen, I know it ain't y'all birthday, but I just want to surprise y'all and bring y'all a piece of cake on. He did me. He said, wait a minute. I just, I know y'all paid for your meal. I want to give you one of the best pieces of cake we got. And then after that, I want to take it off your bill. They may come and say it's your birthday. Just know it's just a surprise from God. But if God can bring you a piece of cake, Why you were sleeping down with 
speak against it, and I don't want you to do that. Our prophet ain't even got this yet. Gonna be told you it will blow your Five. A and PC Bible. Y'all stay right where y'all at. Don't move. Don't move because I got to get there. Look around you, new beginnings, ministries. Uh-huh. Reply the Lord among the nations and cities. What is he doing? He's giving people results. Because he needs you to see. He wants you to see. Yeah. 
that. And the only response you're going to have when they ask you is, I just told Gil what he told me to do. So I don't know what you do and I don't know who you are. This is all I keep seeing you in is a nursing outfit. And God, what? What? Okay, okay, but you're about to walk into a nursing. I'm telling you right now. God said he's about to change everything around you. And he's about to surprise you. And bills or money ain't about to be an issue for you. And he's about to shift you because you don't think you can. But God said, yes, you can. And he's going to be with you. And you're going to go through this and going to come out of here. Somebody say surprise. I got 10 minutes to run through this. They're going to ask you, how did this happen? And it is going to be unexplainable, but it's going to be undeniable. Okay, let me go. Go to the text now. <laughs> let me prove everything I said in the text. Because... I'm going to work this out in nine minutes. Go back to John, the, the ninth chapter, the first verse. I mean, the first. First verse. Oh, yes. I love it. Surprise me, Lord. Yes. This man was sitting by the gate. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just sitting there. Just sitting. No expectation. He probably wished one day he could see. But back in those days, whatever you had, you had it. So he is settled. I'm just going to be blind. I'm going to sit here in bed. Go to, and Jesus walked by and saw the blind man. He was blind from his birth, too. And, too, too, too. <laughs> and his disciple asked the master, who did see it? Who, who messed up? Go to three. Jesus answered, nobody. He said, for a matter of fact, I set this up. So I can do something y'all ain't never done. See, done. Because up until this time, nowhere in the Bible had anybody ever been healed from blindness. Come on. And he said, I did this so the works of God should, not might. Maybe manifest. In other words, my work's about to get some results. Yes. Go to four. Go to four. And I must have worked the works as if while it is yet day and night coming when no man can work. He tells the gentleman, because I need to go through this. He tells him, he, I'm not going through the spit part, but I want y'all to pay attention to this. Hey Amen. Because I told you before, his height, we ain't going to go through the quality, you know, because, you know, it had a, 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 a what's that paint guy in his trunk right now? Uh, the, uh, that's the, that thing. What's that? It's, you know, it, his, he, it had a wolf or two. <laughs> you know, because if he spit and you blind, you can hear. It's like, Go back. Okay, I just want to I just want to stop right there. Okay, but 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 wait a minute. He tells him, he spits, he tells him to go wash in the pool of Shalom, right? He goes wash, and what happens? But that ain't why he went. Oh, he went to get the mud off his eyes. Oh Jesus never told him he was gonna get his sight. Surprise you! Why you doing what they told you to do? You thought you was 
going to work so hard. But he said, no, I'm about to give you some. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Go over to verse 10, please. That's a grenade. Yes. That's a grenade. Therefore, now you didn't come ask him. How does this happen? Wait a minute. You wasn't on welfare, right? Ooh, talk about it. No. Wait a minute. You, you stayed down. King Kennedy. He was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You was an A, right? I was a B. I know that's you. You look different now. I sure do. I have an encounter with you. Yeah. 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 You look like Big Mac, right. the crackhead. Yeah. Yeah. But they called you a possible. Yeah? yeah. yeah. I was for yeah. yeah. I didn't come to Jesus to make it to a possible. I just came to Jesus because it was time. Yeah. He never told me what he was going to unfold. Oh, and me. Just to walk from a crackhead to somebody. Like I told you, I used to smoke a rock, but now I talk about a rock. And that rock that I talk about now, his name is Jesus. And guess what? And I can't give enough of them. And I give them everything I got. Like I used to get a dope dealer. But guess what? I am a new beginning. Yeah. Talk about me if you want. How did that happen? I went to church. Yeah. Well, matter of fact, I went to get that mud off of me that you put on. Oh, yeah. That's good. She she that mud. Mud. Thank you for putting that mud on me. Because if I never got that mud on me, I would have never had it on me to get washed off. So, then when they said unto him, how were your eyes open? How? Go to that. He answered and said, a man called Jesus. May Clay, man, I got three minutes. Uh, and May Clay, look in my eyes and said to me, go wash in the pool, sir, and wash, and I went and wash. And I'll be. Okay, can you drop down to verse 34? 34. I got two minutes to do this. Somebody said surprise me. Was that a surprise? See, then I'll tell you, God was trying to surprise me. But let me show you the whole setup. Because I'll show you the whole setup. I have not asked Jesus properly. I'm asking Jesus today. Thank you. Google it. And they answered unto him and said unto him, Thou was all together born in sins, and does thou teach us? And they cast him out. So they cast him out. Go ahead. 35. 35. This is. Jesus heard what they had cast about, and when he found him, the man, he said unto him, Do thou believe on the Son of God? Wow. Now, you remember, he didn't even know who Jesus was, because he asked him. He said, I knew a man named Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He said, uh, Keep on going, 36. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord? What? Who is he? Who? Lord. That I might believe on him. Keep on going, 37. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. I believe. Did you see the setup? He set him up. Not his obedience went to believe. He just obeyed. He said, Now, nah, Lord, everything you've been going through this year has been a setup so you can become a believer. And guess what? And worship him. So he came. I came to make you an earth. earth. Yes, earth. Uh -huh. A believer? What's the other word? Yeah. Wait a minute. So that means I gotta, now that I believe, it shouldn't take as much to get you to do what I want you to do. Come on now. Come on to the people. Now, you can receive it. Now, what did I say? Hebrews 10 30. I just went through all the three scriptures for today, for, for the band. You might receive. 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 Yeah. 
And you're going to carry it away. And you're about to enjoy it to the full. Because now I got you convinced. And you believe. And now you're fully persuaded. This year, send me your feet. I'm done. This year has been set up for me, for you, for you. You say, you know what? I wasn't even expecting to get my sight. But everything you go and surprise you with, it just makes you become greater believers. Yes. So let's take you. Father, we thank you right now. I just believe that the people here have heard. And now they're about to shift. And they know their obedience is going to get them into a place their faith has not left. But when they receive it by faith, they begin to receive everything you want to do. Now, I pray for all of those that came out for more than that, that they get a miracle surprise. Yay! And they get the results that they'll be able to come back and be an advertisement for you of what it looks like to obey. So we thank you, we honor and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. By your heads why I have you here. We're just going to do one call today. Because there may be somebody amongst us that is not a believer. And they want to know about Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Again, we're not opening up the doors to the church. Man, you can go to church all your life and never be saved. Hey, Amen. We just want to get you into the kingdom. And if that's you, amen, just raise your hand if you want to be saved today. Amen. If everybody's good, we good. So, Father, we just thank you for all these, your children, that you're about to show out on their life. And you're about to work your work through them. So everybody going to come by and ask them how. And they're going to point them right back to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Give God glory. Lord, we thank you for the man of God. We thank you that he, are, he is a believer, a doer, and a receiver, oh Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that because of he is a earl, Lord, that we, Lord, are the manifestation and the evidence, oh Lord, of everything that he, that he said yes, and because he's an earl, Lord. So, Lord, touch him right now, top of his head to the soles of his feet, oh Lord. Refresh him, oh Lord. A refreshing wind blow upon your man of God right now. In the name of Jesus, protection, O oh Lord, from seen and unseen dangers, O oh Lord. We love you, we honor you, we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It is offering time here at New Beginning Ministries. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to give you guys some instructions. So today... Um, we do want to pour into the woman of God that will be coming up at 1045. We want to bless her. He talked about the exceedingly, the abundantly, and above all she can ask or think. That's the type of offering we want to see today for the woman of God. Also, you should be able to, her cash app is showing. Facebook, you should be able to see her cash app. Please, so into our pastor, Teresa McCurry, today. Also, we do have our Change for Change. Our Change for Change is for our Vacation Bible School. We fundraise. This is our fundraiser for Vacation Bible School. We do it all year round. So please give to our Vacation Bible School. I mean, your Change for Change. Also, um, as you see on the board, we do have our cash out for Pastor Teresa and also for the house. If you're writing checks for New Beginning Ministries, you can write, either write it out, New Beginning Ministries, or you can just say NBM. If you're writing a check for Pastor Teresa, you can just put on the check, Teresa McCurry. I do want to emphasize that if you're giving to Teresa, um, Teresa McCurry, please cash app, use her cash app, not the church's cash app today. Thank you. And um, also for today's date, the amount that you're giving, and also where you're allocating your money on your envelope. I think that's it. And now we're going to have a nugget of giving from our own elder, Kimberly Moore. Praise Amen. God, praise God. So, so we're coming from giving God's exchange, divine exchange rate, Amen. given, authored by our very own Apostle Greg and Senior Pastor Lisa McCurry. And I see a book too coming. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you, Lord. Uh, page eight. The Bible says that it is better to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35. In everything I have 
pointed out to you by example that by working diligently in this matter, we ought to assist the weak, being mindful of the word of the Lord and how he himself said, it is more blessed, makes one happier and one and more the in envy to give than to receive. Yes. What does that mean? What does the Bible say? It is more blessed to give yes. than receive. It means when receiving, you will only enjoy that which what which has been given and placed in your hand. But but when you are the one that yes. is giving, you will end up being more blessed, yes. come on, having come on, come more on. in your hands that the person that you would have given in the first place. Yes. Come on. Also, God is always give, going to give back to you in greater ways greater than way. you have given before. Yes, you Lord. make a living by what you get, what, what make your lifestyle by what we give. Many people live their, their income, we live yes. by our outcome. Everything we have comes from our giving. Yes. And that's giving from a good heart. Your heart has to be postured. Yes. Your giving has to be postured and open to give. You only get what you put in. You don't put nothing in, you don't get nothing out. Give God all. Yes. He gave his only begotten son. Yes. Give God your all. Thank you, Lord. Give God your all. Amen. And your giving is an action. It is three things. It's proof that you love him, yeah. that you trust him, yeah. and that you are obedient yeah. to his word. Yeah. You are obedient to your, his word. Yes, so let's stand to our feet. Yes, yes. Let's get some traveling music. And wait for the...
We'll be having a leadership training here at the church. You have to have already signed up to attend. Those who have signed up, we will see you Tuesday morning. Doors open at 9, conference, well, the um, training starts at 10. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, and my other announcement is this. The cookout is coming Sunday, September 12th. Y'all cooks and you know who you are. Well. Need to see me, see me today. See, I, I, I need to see you today. Now, if you not cook, and we tell you this every year, but some people just don't listen. <laughs> Y'all know Pastor D shoot from the hip. So, see me with what you're going to bring. I may tell you, no, baby, I may, I may need you to bring some paper cups. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm saying it in love. But we want to get ready, we want to get excited because we're going to have an awesome time. The community is more than likely going to come out. We want them to join and eat with us if they'd like to. And we're just really excited about this year. If you want to get baptized, please see me because we are going to baptize. Even though it's not going to be in Lake Erie, it's going to be in Lake New Beginnings over here. Yeah. Alright, and any first time visitors, we did have one. Do you mind just standing briefly? I, you don't have to give a testimony. You don't have to give your name. Or we just want to give you a virtual hug and welcome you to New Beginning Ministries. On behalf of Apostle Greg and Senior Pastor T, welcome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing Jesus with us. Just hope something was said or done that blessed you today. Amen. All right, because we introduce a real God to real people with real issues. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I want to thank you. I want to thank you on Facebook. We do have 1045 um, coming up. You can join us again. Again, like and share this um, broadcast with your friends and your family. We appreciate you. We appreciate everyone who came out today. Thank you so much. Um, so as we transition, I'm going to ask that this remains the sanctuary where we're going to intercede and pray for today's service. Um, if you're exiting the building, please exit out of the rear doors. Um, and also, if you want to fellowship, you can fellowship in the room, um, in the overflow or in the lower level. So I just want to say thank you again, and let's get ready. Amen. 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 Amen.